Hello everyone, welcome to Sorcerer's Classes. This is Tushar Shaw and in this video we will be continuing the jam uh, 2019 paper that we were solving since the last uh, quite a lot of videos. Okay, uh, we were doing the NAT questions type and uh, 5 questions from the NAT type is already completed in the last video. So, we will be continuing from question number 46 uh, as, as question number 45 was was deal done in the last video so we'll be continuing from question number 46 okay in this video so uh, in look uh, looking at the for, for question number 46 it says the in the structure in the structure of p4h10 the number of pop bonds is okay so let me firstly draw the structure of p4h10 so Okay, so uh, this is the total structure for P4H10. Okay, now in the structure you can see that this is one POP bond, 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 this one is a bridge headed POP bond, and this one is also a bridge headed POP bond. Okay, so this, like this one is above the plane, and this one is below the plane, you can imagine it like that. Okay, so yeah, so there are six POP bonds that are present. Okay, so in the question that is the that, that is the question that is being asked. So six POP bond ones, uh, like uh, uh, the number of POP bond which is equal to six that we have uh, know the structure now. Okay, so in the chat box you will be writing six as your answer. Okay, let us let us move on to the next question. That is question number forty seven. So the question number forty seven says the number of vertices in an icosahedral Borin, closer borin. Okay. So uh, obviously, if you can consult uh, Google for the structure of icosahedral borin, because it is a very difficult structure and uh, like cannot be drawn so easily. Okay. So, so if we just uh, look at the structure over here. Uh, So, the structure is kind of like this. So, I am trying to draw it may be or may not be possible for me to like draw it properly. So, let us see. Okay. And here is one B and sorry, here is one B and here is one B. Okay. So, here is one bond, here is one bond, here is one bond and here is one bond. Okay, here is one bond, here is one bond, here is one bond and here is one bond. Okay, so yeah and this B has H, this has H, this also has H, this has H, uh, this one has H and this has H. Okay, so this is the uh, closer, closer borin structure. Okay, this is the closer borin structure. Okay, now uh, number of vert vertices in a equicidal closer borin is asked. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 uh, B bond B vertices are present in the closer borin structure of a equicidal closer borin. Okay, so in so 12 will be the correct answer. Okay, so in the chat box you will be writing 12 as your answer. Okay, moving on to the next question that is question number 48. It says, based on the information given below, the isoelectric point PI of lysine is. Okay, the structure of lysine as it is drawn in the uh, question, I will just draw it. OH, double bond O, here it is NH3 and here, I am sorry. NH2. So, the neutral structure for uh, lysine is this one. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we must understand the one of the uh, one of this concepts that uh, if uh, uh, like if uh, amino acid, if an amino acid is basic in nature, that is the R group which is present in there is basic in nature. Then, we you have the three pK values. The pK value for this one, this uh, H is obviously equal to 2.22. The 2.2. This for this uh, uh, 
I am sorry for this this pk for uh, for this na2 would be equal to uh, 10.5 no no sorry not 10.5 this will be equal to pk pk for this one will be equal to 9.1 and the pk for this h2 will be equal to uh, 10.5 okay so you must remember this fact that when uh, when uh, then the r group of the amino acid is basic in nature then the pi of the solution would be equal to the pk of both the sum of the pk of both the amino uh, uh, both the basic groups okay pk1 and P pk2 divided by 2 and similarly in case of uh, acidic uh, this r groups what would the, the then the pi would be equal to the um, pk of both the acidic groups which are present some of the acidic groups divided by 2 okay so by here the basic groups is considered so we will be taking the basic group in consideration so the first pk here is 9.1 plus uh, because in the structure you can see the add the pk equal to 9.1 the and the this nh the, this nh2 gets protonated to form nh3 plus and at the pk of 10.5 okay uh, where the pointer yeah at the pk of 10.5 in the structure that is given and i have not drawn the uh, like question the like the reaction that is given in the question paper properly so uh, at uh, pk equal to 10.5 the this nitrogen is uh, hydrated to uh, like uh, hydrogenated to give the nh3 plus okay so 9.1 for this value plus 10.5 for that value divide by 2 you calculate it you will be getting the value to be uh, 9.8 okay so 9.8 is the correct answer over here now the option is uh, the question has said to like uh, uh, drowned out to one decimal place so in the chat box you will be writing 9.8 as your answer okay moving on to the next question question number 49 okay question number 49 says that this is a type of question i have already like explained you during the my stereochemistry classes so r2 methyl 1 butanol okay uh, r2 methyl 1 butanol has a specific rotation on plus 13.5 and the specific rotation of 2 methyl butanol contains uh, containing 40 uh, percent of the s isomer is okay so the R isomer has a specific rotation of plus 13.5. Okay, the specific rotation of 2 methyl butanol containing 40% of S isomer, uh, S enantiomer. Okay, so for a solution having 40% S enantiomer, there would be 60% uh, R enantiomer. Okay, so now what would happen is the 40% R and 40% S would react to give 80% racemic mixture. Okay and 20% of the excess R uh, would be left, okay, R and Shomar would be left. So, 80% of this would be SME mixture, so the rotation for this part would be equal to 0. Now, the 20% of R, okay, so here the 13.5 value uh, is there for 100% R, so by unitary method we get, uh, so for 100% uh, R and Anshomar, the specific rotation is equal to, specific rotation is equal to, uh, um, 13.5 okay so for 20 percent of r isomer r enantiomer we have the specific rotation is equal to 13.5 into 20 divided by 100 okay now you have a cal you have a ca have your calculator in your hand uh, calculate it 13.5 into 20 divided by 100 okay so this is equal to 2.7 Okay, 2.7 degree. Now, the, the obviously as R isomer is present, the R isomer is in the plus form, so this would also be the specific rotation would also be in the plus form. Okay. Now, the uh, the reaction and the question is set to like uh, round up to one decimal plate place. So in the chat box, you will be writing 2.7 as your correct answer. Okay. Well, it was a very easy question. I have already taught you in uh, the, these things, uh, the questions regarding stereochemistry. Okay. So, it will be easy for you to like solve the questions. Okay. So, let us move on to the question number 50, which is the last question of this video. So, the number of gold between interaction present in the following compound is. Okay. So, I have already like uh, this ex example, I am not explaining it to you because if you are following my classes since the beginning, you know that I have already explained to you that these uh, structures, these reactions to you, that is uh, this structure to you that is uh, the cyclohexane derivative 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane derivative and I have explained that how many gauge butyl interactions are there present in this compound okay so uh, the compound here is given this this one CH3 and CH3 
Okay, so in this compound, I am just telling you the answer. Three Gauss-Newton interaction, Gauss-Newton interactions are present. Okay, three Gauss-Newton interactions are present in this uh, this example. Okay, so three is the uh, specific answer for this uh, this uh, uh, question, and therefore in the uh, chat box you will be writing three as your answer. Okay, so let us wrap this video up. Uh, we just completed the one mark section of the uh, NAT questions, and in the next two videos, we'll be completing the two mark section of the NAT questions. Okay, after that, we'll be completing this uh, Jam, Jam 2019 paper, and then uh, we'll be discussing that what paper would be then start. We'll be starting then. Okay, so thank you.